What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the most important nodes inside of Blender for creating realistic materials. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, let's jump over into our shading tab right here. And I have my shading tab set up where I have a 3D viewport on the left-hand side, and then I have a shader editor on the right-hand side like this. But we're gonna start by adding a material to this model right here. So to do that, we're gonna come in here and click on the new button right here. And remember what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a principled BSDF shader with a material output. Remember that you can adjust things over here in the shader itself. So you can adjust things like the color or your roughness, other things like that in order to get different effects. However, what we wanna do is we really wanna create our own material that's realistic. And so first off, um, one of the most important nodes that you're gonna use in order to do that is the image texture node. So if I do a shift A and I add an image texture node right here, that node basically allows you to access an image and plug it into our principled BSDF. So let's say that we were to go open a material. So we're gonna go with this wood, fine, dark material. And we're gonna open up the color map for that material. So notice how this node is now linking to that image. However, we need to take that image and we need to plug it into our principled BSDF in the base color right here. And so if you look at this, what this is doing is this is applying that wood color to my model right here. So we can use this in order to um, create textures using images inside of Blender. All right, and so next, I wanna have some control over the way that this actually sits on my model, right? Because right now there's not a whole lot I can do with it. Like let's say I wanted to make it larger or make the grain run a different direction. We don't have a whole lot of ways to do that right now, but what we can do is we can add a node called the texture coordinate node. So we're just gonna do a shift A. We're gonna add a texture coordinate node right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a number of different options to control how the texture is applied to your object. So for example, the generated function is going to come in here and try to automatically generate mapping for your material on the surface. So notice how when I plug this in here, the way that the material sits on the surface changed a little bit. And so that one is good for trying to automatically create those materials, but sometimes you want a little bit more control, right? And so a lot of the time, what we wanna do is we wanna use a UV map in order to control this. But if I was to jump into my UV editor right now, and you can kind of see this on the right-hand side of the page, if I was to try to adjust this, notice how my texture isn't actually changing size um, inside of my UV editor. The reason for that is because we currently have this automatically generating the uh, texture coordinates, but if we were to plug in UV like this, then it'll use the object UVs in order to um, place this material on your surface, right? So now if I was to scale this up and down, notice how my material is getting bigger or smaller over here. So you can set up where the texture coordinates for the way this texture is placed on this surface is using the texture coordinate node. So there's other options in here as well. Like if we drag camera in here, for example, it's going to basically project that texture using our camera. So notice how it's just projecting this over the top and that texture is kind of staying in the same orientation no matter which direction I'm in. So another thing we can do is say that we don't necessarily want to control this using our UVs. Well, there's another node in here called the mapping node. And so if I do a shift A and add a mapping node right here, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me tools to control things like the location, rotation, and scale of my object. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our generated texture coordinates and plug that into the vector right here. And then we wanna take the out vector and plug it into our um, image texture node right here. So then what that does is that's taking the generated um, texture coordinates and it's adjusting them based on the factors that we apply in here. So say that I was to drag this so that the X location is different. Well, this is going to move that texture on my surface based on these directions or changes that I make right here. And so you can use this to like rotate a texture. So say I was to type in a value of 90 degrees, or if I was to drag this like this, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to adjust the direction that your texture is facing. So you could also make this texture bigger or smaller using this node right here. So this one is gonna give you control right here in your shader editor of the size and direction, as well as the uh, as well as the actual place where the texture is placed on top of your object um, using just these sliders right here, 
All right, and so sometimes when you apply materials to surfaces, like for example, I've applied this tile material to this flat surface, everything could just look really flat right like we've got our gloss map set up so that uh, this isn't reflecting in the grout but it is reflecting off the surfaces but it's all very uniform however there's a note in here that we can use in order to make this look a lot better and that's the normal map node and so what the normal map node is basically going to do is it's going to take a normal map image and it's going to apply it to this surface in order to make it look bumpy and so let's go ahead and let's add an image texture node. So I'm just gonna add an image texture node. I'm gonna add the map, but then in order to use this map, we need to transfer this data into the normal um, node right here. So what we can do is we can just do a shift A and we can add a normal map node. And so when we do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take that color data and it's going to transform it into the normal data that this needs in order to make this material look bumpier. And so if you look at this now, this surface isn't nearly as uniform as it was. Like notice how you're getting bumps in here. And sometimes it's easier to look at this if you unplug your base color just to kind of see what it's doing. We'll go ahead and unplug our roughness as well because so you can just see the bumpiness. But basically what this is doing is this is using that image data in here in order to simulate materials having ups and downs without actually moving any of the data. So it's not actually like moving everything up and down. What it's doing though is it's making the light react to everything as if this was bumpy and it was actually moved up and down. So you can see how this is adding a whole bunch of realism to this material. So if we plug our maps back in like this, Notice how you're getting things like these up and down bumps in here that when uh, this wasn't plugged in, everything just looks really uniform. A normal map can take the material that's on your object and uh, make the light react to it in a different way like the surface was bumpy without you actually having to create that 3D geometry that's really expensive um, processor wise or graphics card wise in your scene. All right, so sometimes, when you have an object like this one, even if you plug all that other stuff in, right? Like you plug your normal map in, you plug your roughness in, your color in, um, you're still just getting this kind of like flat feeling result. And um, because, because when you look at something like this, this kind of like stone paver thing, um, when you look at this stone paver texture, there should be more ups and downs, right? These stones should be kind of up, the little grass in between them should be down. That's just how things look in the real world. Well, what we can do is we can use a node called the displacement node in order to make this happen. So we're gonna plug in a displacement map. So I'm gonna do an image texture node. We're gonna plug in the displacement map right here, but we can't plug the displacement map directly into the displacement node right here. What we need to do is we need to do a shift A and we need to add a displacement node in between them. So then we can plug our color data into our height and our displacement into our displacement. One thing we want to make sure that we do though is we want to make sure when we do this that we change our color space to non-colored data so that this can read this data properly. But now what you've got is you've got, this, uh, you've got this object over here that's going to render out and nothing is going to happen yet. So we're in rendered mode right now and we're in Eevee. Well, in order to use displacement, we don't wanna use Eevee, we wanna use cycles. All right, and so right now, notice how nothing is happening even though we switched over to cycles. There's a couple of settings that we need to change in order to make this work. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our material settings and scroll down and under, um, under surface, under settings, you wanna make sure that you set your displacement to displacement and bump. All right, so you might've noticed even if you play around with these a little bit, nothing is really happening other than some up down movement. And so the reason nothing is happening is because if we were to tab into edit mode, or better yet, if we were to jump back into layout mode and just look at this and tab into edit mode, there's no actual geometry in here. If we were to switch to shaded mode or solid mode, um, there's no actual geometry in here for Blender to work with because what Blender does is it um, simulates displacement by moving points on the object up and down. And so what we need to do is we need to add some more geometric data to this object right here. And we can do that by enabling a feature that Blender has included, but it's something that's marked as experimental. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into our scene settings. We wanna change our feature set from supported to experimental. And so when we switch this over to simple, notice that we're starting to get some ups and downs on this object over here in cycles. But 
we still need to check a box, which is adaptive subdivision. Adaptive subdivision is the box that shows up and it's only gonna show up when you're in cycles, you have experimental mode turned, and you have experimental mode turned on. So then if you check the box, notice how this automatically subdivides your surface so that you have more geometric detail that this can move up and down in order to generate this realistic surface inside of your rendering. So it's using the displacement material in here to add displacement to your object. And you can use these two sliders to adjust the strength of the effect. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there was anything I left off this list. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other Blender material tutorials on this page if you wanna learn more. If you like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.